So this is a little unorthodox to start, but they're live streaming right now throughout the whole convention center. And if you're a first time entrepreneur, you're 25 to 35, please come to the main ballroom right now because I'm gonna give you a presentation on rookie mistakes and what not to do. So other than the relationships you developed here, this is probably uh, the most important session that you could go to uh, today. Uh, so my name's Tom Matta. I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania originally. Went to Carnegie Mellon uh, for engineering and business. Had the distinct privilege of being a part of the Pittsburgh venture community. Uh, we raised some money for StatEasy. Didn't reach product market fit. Uh, and it's a neat company, but it sucks to have a, a neat dead company. Um, and so there are a lot of lessons um, that we can take from StatEasy, and that's why I'm here. So the, I have 30 minutes, but the goal is just to have a 10-minute overview presentation and 20 minutes of Q&A or discussion, whatever people want to talk about. Um, and in terms of the agenda, I was really talking about five ideas. Uh, the idea of product market fit, think big, start small, data hiring, and the founder experience. So to give you a little backstory, so StatEasy was sports and, or stats and video software for sports teams. And the story that we would tell was about a running back with Pittsburgh Central Catholic named Damian Jones Moore. And for one of his games, he had three touchdowns, 200 yards. The Marine Corps gave him a medal at the end of the event, but neither of his parents could be there because they both had to work. They were pulling down two jobs to give him a chance to go to a private school and play ball and then go to college. But because they were using our data collection system, they were able to automatically generate a highlight video for Damian Jones Moore and send it to his dad via text message at the end of the game. So his dad's at the mill watching his son on break, um, and then he was able to go home and celebrate with his son and not miss a thing. So the big picture, imagine a social sports network where we're using software to generate all this custom video content for an infinite number of, of players. So it's a huge idea. Uh, we were able to raise money. We had a killer team and board. Uh, we got to about 250 companies. It was really neat, uh, but it didn't work out. So uh, after it didn't work out, I moved to California. And Ned Renzi introduced me to Manu Kumar, who was a Carnegie Mellon guy who started uh, Card Munch and Sneaker Labs and K9 Ventures. And he had invested in a company called eShares, who uh, was led by Henry Ward. And to the pitch for eShares is, if you are raising private capital, often the lawyers will actually print paper stock certificates and then FedEx overnight them to founders to sign and then FedEx overnight them to recipients to, to hold. And we thought that that system was just silly and it should be electronic stock certificates and electronic signatures. And then if you create this electronic platform, uh, you can track cap tables, you can do valuations, you can do stock comp expensing, we can do 83Bs, and we're just adding all these amazing features, creating what we believe is a, the modern equity uh, platform. So it's a rocket ship. 27 million in funding from Union Square Ventures, Spark Capital, uh, also a killer team and board that's actually executing. Um, and 4,000 companies, and we're adding about 200 companies a month. So the first idea uh, is this concept of product market fit. Uh, and so for StatEasy, it was these generated highlight videos for parents. And fortunately, because we were working at Pittsburgh Central Catholic, Lynn Swan was there, and he was a dad. He had a son who's on the team. He's a wide receiver, catching touchdowns, running in the end zone. It was just amazing video content. So we were able to generate Lynn Swan highlight videos of his son, and he's also flying to Nebraska for college game day because he's an announcer with ABC and ESPN. He's not always able to be there. He's a really, really, really happy customer. So if you had asked us when we were building this business, do I have product market fit, we would have said, yes, the product works, and Lynn Swan loves it, which is supposed to be funny. But um, <laughs> so that's, that's not really indicative of product market fit because Lynn really was an outlier. And it was great, he was a highly motivated early adopter, but we weren't able to move down um, the customer adoption funnel to a bigger chunk of the market. So don't lie to yourself. And if you feel like you're lying to yourself, talk to your board, talk to your mentors. So the way eShares looks at a minimum viable product, it's these electronic stock certificates. Uh, and the beauty is there are all these network effects where if you're issuing stock, preferred stock to investors and they have a positive experience uh, receiving electronic security on eShares, they have all these other investments where they're like, I have all these paper certificates on my table. I'd love to be able to have a, an electronic portfolio on eShares, and so we can push the network. And so we have investors come in every day. They actually write eShares in their term sheets. So uh, Mark Andreessen says, uh, a great market will pull product out of the startup 
And the number one company killer is a lousy market. Because if you have a great market, you can solve your product problems and your team problems. So action item, focus obsessively on getting the product market fit, and don't lie to yourself. It won't work out. Next concept, think big but start small. Stat easy, as you could see, we were really passionate about the huge vision. This could be a big company. Uh, but if you start big, you're going to lose big uh, because you're not focused on the little wins that will eventually grow into this big company. And the way eShares operates, it's, it's a huge vision too where not only are we collecting all this equities information, but imagine if we could solve the liquidity problem for private markets and we could create a NASDAQ or a NYMEX for, for the private sector, it'd be just amazing. But in order to get there, you have to start small. Can we build a cap table solution that's better than Excel? Yes, when? Can we build an options exercises workflow that's better than PDF option grants with DocuSigns and paper checks? Yes, we did, when? Can we build evaluations, uh, software platform that can uh, provide strike prices for option grants and still be defensible? Yes, we did, win. And the, pr the market just keeps pulling product out of this startup. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what else they require in the next few years. So think big, start small, but make sure you win small. Idea number three, data. So at Stat Easy, which I think this is really common in a lot of early stage companies, we had an underdeveloped data model. It wasn't built in the product, and so it was work to both collect and analyze the data. And after, uh, a full day, it's midnight, you really want to go home and get six or seven hours of sleep, you're not going to spend the time building your data set and then analyzing your data set. You're just going to say, well, I'm going to we'll try to uh, solve that problem tomorrow. At eShares, the data model is built in the product, so the collection is easy and then you can focus on the analysis. Uh, to give it an example of the extent at which um, Henry Ward, the CEO of eShares, goes into his data review. We had a full company, all hands, 70 people in a room, data review that was 90 slides. And I had never experienced that before. It was 90 minutes, 90 slides, 90 charts and graphs, going into every um, nook and cranny in the product that you could possibly look at. So for first-time founders, you're not obsessing about your data enough. Be transparent, encourage others to obsess too, and share the obsession. Hiring, uh, this was a tough lesson. So at Stat Easy, we hired too quickly, really thinking that new hires is good. We're gonna bring in additional people to solve these problems. Uh, it's a, a you know, consequence of growth. This is gonna be great. At eShares, once we hit, I was employee number 12 and we're at 70, and once we hit 40, we really were opening up headcount, and Henry wrote a blog post uh, about how to hire, and it's very different thinking. And I'll just read it verbatim because I, I don't have, know any other better way of saying it. But that hiring means we failed to execute and need help. Hiring is not a consequence of success. Revenue and customers are. Hiring is a consequence of our failure to create enough leverage to grow on our own. So before you're getting ready to hire that 1099 or W-2 employee, how did you fail to create leverage to grow on your own? I think it's a really different way of thinking. And, and something I think we could talk about more is the founder experience in terms of what it's like to be a founder. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Uh, it's stat easy, it was an emotional roller coaster. Uh, at one point when we were just frustrated because the market wasn't responding to this super awesome vision, this like neat company idea. Uh, and then you know, we stopped exercising, we weren't really um, doing the self-care required to have a sustainable founder experience and then have a sustainable company, uh, which didn't work out. Um, so at eShares, they have things built into the program, a gym membership stipend. We have these one-on-ones with managers, which are casual walks where you can go talk about anything. You can talk about work, you can talk about relationships, you can talk about the rent you're paying in San Francisco. Um, so there, it's a high-pressure environment, but there are pressure release valves built in. So for, for young entrepreneurs, Focus on figuring out how you can have a, a personal but sustainable founder experience because if you burn out, the company's gonna burn out too. And this is, this is really what I, what I wanted to say. <laughs> the five ideas were get to product market fit, don't lie to yourself, think big, start small, win small, obsess about your data, how to hire is how did you fail to create leverage to grow on your own, and find a sustainability mentor. Um, Henry Ward at eShares lists a few things for essential reading and rereading. 
if you haven't read The Lean Startup, buy it, read it once a month while you're building your company. Spin selling is really helpful in terms of understanding the sales process, especially for organizational sales. Classic, how to win friends and influence people. And a lot of this content is summary content from longer blog posts from Henry Ward and Manu Kumar, uh, and you can follow them on Medium. And so I was really hoping this would be a presentation of my experience that would lead into a discussion. Um, I think basically because of the way things are set up, that might be difficult. So I'm happy, happy to uh, have any Q&A or discuss anything. Ned. Okay. So the question was, um, how do you use data to confirm or not confirm product market fit? And it has a lot to do with uh, lean startup mentality in terms of the build, measure, learn cycles. So the data may indicate um, a different direction. Um, and the way, the way we work in terms of product development is we try to get in the hands of users as soon as possible. And we have a lot of power users that are interested in being a part of our beta and law firm users that are interested in making sure that everything is legal um, and better than the, the past process. Um, and another thing that Henry always says is uh, we don't curve fit uh, for, the, for the 1%. So we make sure when we're getting feedback, it's feedback that's representative of the whole and not an outlier. So we don't spend a ton of time developing product that meets an outlier need and doesn't meet the, the 90%. Any more questions? I'd like to believe that it could be, but I, I really don't know. Uh, so the question was, I'm sorry, based on what I learned at eShares, do we think that if we tried again with StatEasy and we did things differently, could it be successful? Um, I, I, th I think that it's possible. Uh, the, the, the hardest thing, especially talking about an MVP, was that the number one company killer is a lousy market. And we had a conversation about your son who's playing baseball and the issues that he has trying to generate highlight videos for his son where he has to pay someone a lot of money in order to uh, collect the content or you collect the content and you're not enjoying the game because you're looking at it through a lens like it's a pain that people just get um, but it's really hard to scale across amateur sports because one of the jokes that we would tell is every um, every coach is a king and every athletic department is a kingdom and so it's really hard to get channels where you could get into a lot of schools and leagues and states and countries without a huge upfront expense so the, the cost of customer acquisition was quite high, and we didn't really see the synergies that we needed from working with uh, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Directors Association or the California State Athletic Directors Association. They were happy to um, you know, have lunch and, and network, but in terms of really using that organization as a channel to push the product concept in the market didn't really work out. So I think it's possible the markets evolve. Perhaps the market is better now. If we were more mobile um, and we were more database in terms of our, our outbound marketing analytics, then maybe we'd have a shot, but it still would be a, a, tough, a tough company. Um, I'm, I'm having a great experience at eShares. It's been very humbling uh, after having a failed company to work with operators that really know what they're doing. Uh, so I'm going to stay with eShares as long as I'm still learning. Um, Pittsburgh has a ton of huge advantages in terms of, we were able to raise $1.2 million and make it last for three years with a team of like four to seven people. Our burn rate at eShares is 600K a month. Uh, it's a much bigger company, but those, those kinds of dollars don't give you enough uh, build, measure, learn cycles in the Valley. And so you just get additional time to figure it out in, in uh, the Midwest or Pittsburgh or Boston. Um, I think in talking with like the uh, innovation infrastructure here, Dave Mawinney and uh, Innovation Works, the best of Pittsburgh can go up against the best of the Valley in New York. The best of Boston can go up against the best of the Valley in New York. Um, you just really, I think it helps to have a lot of connections in the area so you can keep an eye on what's happening with the bigger players. Um, and if you're able to have funding and you have strong relationships with customers, especially the early adopters, you can definitely win anywhere. I think that ties into our issues with our data because uh, like on the, when I was talking with Dan about his son uh, in, in the baseball video, he gets the concept. It, it's a real pain. It would be great. Uh, and we were seeing that kind of momentum in the one-to-one -one conversations with people. Uh, but the, the market traction 
wasn't following uh, in terms of trying to build a scalable system because we, we can't have a personal conversation with every parent. Um, so I think it was easy to lie to ourselves because we were having all these great interactions with customers that were really fired up, up about what we were doing. But, uh, and then the data wasn't there to, to say that we were in trouble and that we were having traction onboarding teams and onboarding companies or onboarding teams and onboarding uh, parents that would be creating self-service highlight videos online. Uh, so a part of venture is belief. 90% don't make it, and you don't get started unless you really believe that you can be the 10%. Um, but I think at some point you have to build in the feedback um, data cycles so that the, the data is validating that you are the 10% that's going to make it. <laughs> so I, I guess the issue for us is we didn't have the data that was telling us that we were in trouble until it was too late. I think the hardest thing for first timers is you don't know what you don't know. And so you have to be plugged into networks that can help compensate for that. So that can be mentors, that can be a board, that can be um, your college buddies that are living in the valley. I, I, I just had an amazing morning talking with uh, uh, Mr. Scoble and Fu Connor about all their thoughts and everything that's happening nationally. And I learned more in that hour than I've learned in a long time about what's going to happen with VR and and uh, augmented reality. So you have to plug into people that know more than you do and then absorb as much of that information as possible. Um, and then still be humble and understand you, you don't know what you don't know and, and uh, a part of it is just getting out there and giving it a shot. Well, I'm, I'm here representing eShares, but I, I'll have to admit I'm a grunt. <laughs> I wasn't really making the, the hiring decisions. We'd help with interviewing, but uh, the management eShares, um, this is all their second or third startups. So I think um, Henry Ward and Manu Kumar and, and Josh Merrill, who's the head of product, who's also Carnegie Mellon grad, would say that their first uh, failure definitely would have influenced how they hired. Um, and Henry Ward's blog post on how to hire on Medium is fantastic. Um, and um, so let's chat afterwards and I can give you the link, but uh, he, my presentation of how to hire was really a summary of the big things that I thought I'd never heard before. Um, hiring means we've failed to execute and need help, which just puts a completely different spin on, on growth. Um, and this sentence is representative of probably a thousand or two thousand words of text that go into much greater detail. So I check it out. So the, the other challenge with, uh, so he asked, um, it sounds like Statis was directed at parents, did he look at other coaches or recruiters for the, the collegiate recruiting process? The other challenge with Statis was there were so many stakeholders involved in the data. You could have um, a videographer would do the video, the statistician would do the stats, uh, they would integrate the stats and video post game and do the synchronization, which would turn the data, data into the metadata that would cut the video. Um, the coaches would be involved in collection. The players would be the subjects with player accounts. The parents would have a parent account, um, which enabled them certain features to create highlight videos that they could then share with recruiters. And then we were also talking with recruiters that were looking for a critical mass of, you know, this is great, but you know, if you've only got Pittsburgh Central Catholic, and call me when you've got PA, Ohio, and West Virginia. We met a lot of interesting characters building this business. Um, and so the the initial focus of what we thought was the market entry point was the coach player parent relationship where the coaches would collect the data the players would be the stars and they would push their parents to buy uh, but then when you have so many stakeholders involved in any kind of a transaction if one aspect of that funnel gets askew then you don't get any cash at the end and then you have a really neat dead company yeah. so um, he pulled the blog post up already and asked um, about some additional detail in the blog post that one of the other recommendations is to hire for trajectory, not necessarily experience, and it gets into the concept of the 10x engineer. And we would actually argue that we have 20x engineers at eShares. Um, some of them have nicknames like the Oracle uh, because they're just, they're just amazing. Um, so I don't think the blog post is trying to invalidate experience. I think it's trying to put the focus on trajectory. Uh, because startups are so fast moving and evolve so quickly, the odds are that the experience that you have is going to be readily 
applicable to the problem that you're solving um, doesn't, isn't as important. It's really what can you learn, where can you go, how fast can you get there? Um, and that's just related to being a culture fit and being able to work within a team and learn as much as possible. So I think as a, as a former founder and now a grunt with a rocket ship in Silicon Valley, there was actually a lot I had to unlearn. Um, so I think, I would like to think that Henry hired me for tra trajectory uh, because I don't know that my experience was as applicable because we made so many mistakes. If there aren't any other questions, I'm, I'll make myself available. Also, if any of you are first time entrepreneurs and you're coming to San Francisco and you're fundraising, don't spend money on a hotel, come stay with me. I've got the best air mattress in San Francisco. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help, I'd be glad to.